President Rodrigo Duterte will likely step down if former Senator Bongbong Marcos wins his election case against Vice President Lenny Robredo. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque says this was the logical conclusion one would make when Duterte said he was ready to resign if the ideal leader will take his place in Malacanang. And he has said that uh, he thinks that um, uh, Senator Bongbong Marcos is one of the better qualified leaders to succeed him. If there's developments and he will win the protests and he becomes vice president, yes, he will make through his work. If, if he wins in the, if he becomes vice president, perhaps the president will make through his word that he will step down. Marcos and Robredo are locking horns on who won the vice presidency in 2016. Marcos filed an electoral protest with the Presidential Electoral Tribunal, or PET, claiming Robredo only won because there was cheating in the last elections. Robredo won over Marcos by a slim margin of roughly 260,000 votes. The PET will decide whether or not Marcos is the rightful vice president. Robredo's lead lawyer, Romulo Macalintal, says in response to Roque's statement, quote, Insofar as we are concerned, President Duterte's resignation will never happen because Mr. Marcos will never win his electoral protest. United States Defense Assistant Secretary Randall Shriver warns the Philippines against buying military equipment from Russia. I think they should think very carefully about that. It's not a, it's not a, if they were to proceed with purchasing major Russian equipment, I don't think that's a helpful thing to the alliance. And ultimately, I think we can be a better partner than, than the Russians can be to the Philippines. The Philippines has been searching for submarines from several countries, including South Korea and France, as it continues to modernize its defense forces. In an earlier interview, Defense Chief Delfin Lorenzana said the deal will more likely be sealed with Russia. The planned pivot to Russia comes as the Philippines seeks to pursue an independent foreign policy under President Rodrigo Duterte and reduce its dependence on the U.S. But Shriver says Russia's track record should make the Philippines tread very carefully. To understand the nature of this regime in, in Russia, and uh, I don't need to go through the full laundry list, Crimea, Ukraine, uh, the chemical attack in the U.K., um, so you're investing in not only platforms, but you're making a statement about a relationship. Shriver also emphasizes the value of the U.S. puts on the Philippines staying democratic after Duterte floated the possibility of a junta if he steps down. We're very proud of the democracy here in the Philippines, and uh, I hope the future of the Philippines remains in the hands of the people here. And it's important that the democracy remains strong. Ride-hailing giant Grab Philippines urges its riders to avoid bookings along EDSA during rush hour, with the driver-only car ban in place. Grab's public affairs head Leo Gonzalez says, We strongly urge our passengers to avoid setting pickup and drop-off points along EDSA. If unavoidable to pass by EDSA without a passenger, we encourage our drivers to use the yellow lane and take the nearest exit away from EDSA. On the first day of the dry run of the ban, many patrons of ride-hailing services were frustrated by the difficulty in booking rides. They also complained of heavier traffic in inner lanes as motorists avoided EDSA. Gonzalez says they have sought dialogues with traffic officials on the new scheme. Gonzalez adds, We agree that one way to solve congestion is to improve shared mobility. However, we hope that authorities will carefully put the interests of the ride-sharing industry as an important consideration in imposing new rules and regulations. Grab also urges its drivers and patrons to be more patient with the new scheme. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, eyes full implementation of the ban starting August 23. The Department of Agriculture, or DA, allows the importation of galunggong, or round scad, to ensure national food security. Agriculture Secretary Emmanuel Peñol allows up to 17,000 metric tons of galunggong imports with a 5% tariff as the closed fishing season nears. The importation was allowed to ensure sufficient supply of galunggong during the holidays when consumption is usually high. Closed fishing season starts in November and will end in March 2019. The move allows fish to propagate and avoid overfishing. Galunggong may be imported as early as September 1 and up to the last day of December 2018 or until revoked by the DA. The DA earlier set the suggested retail price of galunggong at 140 pesos per kilo. Prices of the fish jumped 11.7% in the first half of the year. 
The Philippine Statistics Authority reports that round scad production dipped by 0.32% during the second quarter of 2018. The Philippines defeats Kazakhstan 96-59 to in the 2018 Asian Games Thursday in Jakarta, Indonesia. The Filipinos pulled away right in the opening minutes, 12-2, to built a 21-point gap by halftime, 41-20, to then held on to a double-digit lead for the rest of the way at the start of Group D Benz basketball action. The Philippines played minus Filipino-American NBA player Jordan Clarkson, who arrived in Jakarta on the same day of their opening game. Clarkson goes straight to the venue from the airport and watches most of the second-half action. The NBA gave Clarkson a one-time exception to play in the Continental Meet. The 26-year-old Clarkson is expected to suit up in the Philippines' next game versus China Tuesday. Only the top two teams in each group will advance to the next round.